Julie, first of all, if you want to take advantage of this um, stock selling for tax purposes, what do you have to keep in mind? Well, you have to keep in mind, like uh, you mentioned already, that you've got the December 31st date. So the trade has to be mm -hmm. placed by December the 31st, has to be in this year. And um, there's a $3,000 overall tax loss limit. So if your capital losses exceed your capital gains by up to $3,000, you can deduct that $3,000 on your tax return. But if it's in excess of $3,000, that excess amount will be carried forward to future years. So you don't lose it, you still get it. Um, but that, that's, a, that's a time factor for the end of the year here. And Ed, when you're looking at which stocks to sell off, are there some that you might think, hmm, do I want to hold on to it? Do I want to sell it? Do you have any advice about uh, how to go, move forward yeah. on choosing those stocks? I would focus on how to turn lemons into lemonade. If you have a retirement account, you can do a lot more than that 3,000 loss limit. Imagine if you could deduct 100,000 or 200,000 in losses. Well, you can essentially if you do a Roth conversion. You have three factors working in your favor right now. You have lower values, which means the tax on the conversion is less, lower rates for most people, plus under the new law, Roth conversions are permanent. There's no do-overs. So you really have to know what your income is. These two days are probably the best days to project your 2018 income. Almost everything is in. There's no, not going to be any more surprises. You can have a good handle on what it's going to cost you. So if you can do that, you're converting taxable money. Yes, you pay a tax, but you're paying a much lower tax to move your retirement savings into tax-free territory, taking advantage of these depressed values. And when the market rebounds, all of those gains will be tax-free forever. So you're a big winner in a losing market. Julie, there's been a major overhaul of the tax code this year. I think there's probably still a lot of question marks about how all that's going to shake out. How does this affect how investors should be approaching this strategy? Well, first thing, a lot of people are thinking, well, I don't itemize deductions, so I won't get that loss. But that's not true. Even if you're one of the 90% the of people who aren't going to itemize deductions, you can still deduct the capital losses because that's a separate calculation, a separate area of the tax return. So you can still get up to the $3,000 on, the, on the, the tax deduction. The other thing that hit a lot of people in the past was the alternative minimum tax. That tax uh, just caused people's taxes to be higher. And many times if people had capital gains, that caused the alternative minimum tax to kick in, even though you still get the lower rates, uh, the lower capital gains rates with the alternative minimum tax. But with the new uh, law, the alternative minimum tax doesn't start taking away the exemption till a million dollars of alternative minimum taxable income. So a lot fewer people are going to be subject to the alternative minimum tax thanks to the new law. Separate from tax loss selling, yeah. uh, one of the positive narratives that's being spun, especially for the consumer, is that their refunds in the spring are going to be bigger than they thought. I don't know about true? that. It's some people, yeah. but you know, the calls I'm getting now at the end of the year, everybody's saying, oh, I'm getting all my charity and stuff together. You're not even going to deduct that charity. Most people, as she said, are going to be using the new higher standard deductions, which can lower their taxes. But they're going to be in for a rude awakening when they realize their state tax Taxes are limited to 10,000. Uh, assault, the whole assault thing we talked about from right. Months. And most other deductions are not there, including the, the deductions for financial advisors and investment fees, all gone. That's all part of the standard deduction now. Do you think that might lead to uh, a, a downturn in business for financial planners? No, they'll find another way. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, I want to go back to this wash sale rule for a minute because we've been having the conversation here on CNBC really for days now that there haven't been very many buyers out in the market. Could this be affecting that? Um, that, that could be, but, but again, the wash sale rules are you can't, buy our, you can't buy the same security within 30 days before or 30 days after of that sale in order to actually recognize the loss. If you do, you just don't get to deduct the loss now. That amount gets added to your basis. The one thing you need to be careful of with the wash sale rule, because Ed was talking about retirement plans, if inside a retirement account you recognize a loss on the sale of a stock and then you repurchase that same stock outside of the retirement account within that 30-day period, that wash sale rule still applies. So you do have to be careful of that. 
But again, it's 30 days. You can buy something that's similar. It just can't be the same or significantly the same stock. So it can be in the same sector if somebody wants to continue that type of investment. We're seeing the Dow off with 353 points right now. The Nasdaq is down almost 2%, S&P off a percent and a half. But you say forget about watching the markets, that the biggest risk to people's money right now is taxes. It's taxes. That's where most people have their money. The IRAs, your 401k, that's all tax deferred money. That money hasn't been taxed yet. Now's the time to use these losses to bring them into tax-free territory at low cost. Remember, the key to all tax planning is always pay taxes at the lowest rate which is right now. That's kind of like buying, say, buy low and sell high. That's a good one, too.